Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a DIY Dollar Tree Farmhouse Red Truck Sleigh. I know a lot of people have done these, remade these sleighs that they have at the Dollar Tree, but I'm going to put my little spin on it by using these plastic gift bags that they have with the little red truck on them, um, as well as some white craft prank. This is apple barrel paint, but use what you have on hand. And then I'm going to embellish it with this Dollar General ribbon. This is $2.00 for nine feet of three inch wide wire edged buffalo check ribbon. Um, but you can do embellishments or none. You can do floral picks, whatever you, your heart little, little heart desires. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the tag and I'm just gonna squirt white craft paint right on it. I like to use a foam brush, if those of you who not know. I um, mean, I did like that, that this had a worn edge on the um, sleigh, but we're not going to repeat that. We're not going to leave that. We're just going to make it look like barn wood. I know we did a very similar wood grain technique, uh, whitewash wood grain technique in the autumn, but if you're new around here, hi, welcome. And I'm just going to show you a quick and easy way to do this. Now I've decided to leave my, um, the sleigh blades, I guess is what you could call them. Um, the original brown that is with the material. So that's the two bars that are going on both sides. Um, and that's why I wanted to use a foam brush so I don't have to worry about if I accidentally get it um, over. If you use a, a bristle brush, sometimes the bristles will roll off the edge and you won't get as clean uh, leaving the space underneath it. And now I'm putting on a pretty generous coat of this paint uh, because I want it to get nice coverage and cover that sign. Now we've done lots of redos on these signs before, so you know that you can peel the sticker if you want, you know, you wet it and peel it. That's one way um, to get rid of the original image, but there is um, also just leave it and paint over it. So that's what we're gonna do today. Now this does have um, some glitter snowflakes on it, so you can see there, and it also has glitter words that say Merry Christmas. And we're gonna kinda use that to our advantage. We're gonna make it say Merry Christmas and we're gonna show you a really neat technique to use that glitter. Um, but if you don't want it to say Merry Christmas, if you wanna keep this sleigh just for like a winter scene at your house, um, then you go ahead and you can, uh, you know, paint over that, right? Whatever you want on the top or try to remove the glitter or remove the paper. Okay, so, I am mixed, I am mix. I have, sorry, mixed some really light colored gray paint. Um, I wanted my, the slats on my sleigh to be about a ruler's width wide, just to make my life easier. I didn't tell you you needed a ruler, but I'm sorry, I should have told you you needed a ruler. But what I'm doing is I'm dry brush technique. So you guys know, this, this white paint has already dried and set overnight. The um, gray paint is a very, very tiny bit amount of it on the brush and I kind of am wiping it off and we're dry brushing the layers. And that's what we wanna do. You wanna dry brush in layers. So we've done, um, it's just a sort of medium gray color, light gray color. I'm just gonna use two gray colors. So this one is the lightest of the two I'm gonna use, but it actually is like a medium gray. That's why I, I sound like a knucklehead. And I'm using my, my ruler there, as you can see, almost like a straight edge as well to define the different boards. So I lay it down, I brush up to one side, um, then I go ahead and I lay it across on the other side, uh, just a width, uh, a width wide and uh, get nice clean edges that way. See that? And I move that over to the edge and then um, I finish that straight edge. My, my uh, sleigh, my ruler happens to just exactly be um, the right number. So you see that um, it's, it's six, six of my rulers wide is what the board is. Um, so then when that is dry, um, and actually we didn't really let this dry too much. It dried, when you dry brush, it's pretty, it dries pretty quickly is what I'm trying to say. So by the time I was um, ready to uh, finish the, the fifth slat over there, the first one was dry. So I could put my ruler on top of it now. And I wanted to overlap a tiny bit of white space. Now, white is optional. You can just go back when you're all done and put in like a black Sharpie line for darkness between your slats if you want to have 
sort of the defining shadowy sort of black lines between your slats. You can do that as well. Um, a Sharpie would work great with your ruler. Um, or you could use a paintbrush and paint too as well. Um, but I'm just going to leave a little white space. That's what I liked. So I basically did was I overlapped a little bit further into the new slat with the, um, with the ruler. I covered it um, so that I could show you that we'll have some leftover space there. All right. And um, just repeated the process with the remaining slats. Um, you could see there I'm being very careful and I'm showing you that with a steady hand, you don't need necessarily need the ruler. Um, but definitely I would recommend it if you're new to painting, you go ahead and you can use the ruler technique. All right. And then the final one. Um, and don't forget to do the slats on the, uh, the running board on the top. I don't know exactly what it's called, but that's what I would call it. Cause that's where you put your feet, right? <laughs> that's where you, they call it a running board when you're, um, on your car. So why not when you're on your sled? <laughs> I'm sorry, I cracked myself up. Um, so once we've done laying down all of the gray white wash, um, I, I feel like it looks like boards. I've had a lot of compliments. You guys say that it looks like boards too. This is just a technique we've always used. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the um, darker gray paint. And the trick to the darker gray paint is you are going to still have it like you're dry brushing it. So you wanna tap some on and then tap some off. But you want to hold the foam brush straight up and down. Um, and you want to just paint with that chisel tip. Um, and you're going to go uh, the long ways with the chisel tip. Going, um, I guess, the same way the brush is, you're going to go in that direction. And we're just going to put streaks. And if you see that I'm doing the boards that I painted first, um, I'm doing those first um, because they're dry and they can take this dry te paint technique without smearing the gray. And then once I've done all of those boards, then I'm going to go back and just do the other boards that we, um, the second set that we, that we uh, painted. Okay. And, um, I have sort of like a natural, um, not going right there on that second board. So I just continued with it. Um, and once it's dry, I just like it. I mean, I really do love the way it came out. Um, and now here's the thing. It could be done. It really could be. This would be just really cute hanging up all winter on your porch. Um, now, here's where you get to decide how you want to embellish it. Um, and the way we're going to embellish it is I told you guys that I didn't scrape off the glitter that said Merry Christmas. It was that pretty farmhouse font that we, we all like so much or many of us like so much. So what I'm doing is I'm going to take my Sharpie marker, which again, I didn't tell you need in the beginning. And I am, I am no joke just ro rubbing over wherever there was glitter. So it's going to look like, I don't know, like rough and worn looking, which I really do like. But um, you can see it a little bit on the camera when I angle it. But for the most part, you really can see it up close in person. You can definitely see where there's glitter. Um, uh, if you actually have your glitter scraped off. You won't be able to see where there's glitter, but uh, because the glitter is dimensional and when you hold it at an angle, you can actually, I can actually see where it says Merry Christmas. Let me see if I can zoom in here. I think on the camera, you could kind of see a faint shadow of where all the letters are. Um, but in, like I said, in real life, in person, um, it it's much more pronounced. Um, all you have to do is hold um, it to an angle a little bit with the light and you can really see the dimension and I've just taken the sharpie and I've kind of rubbed over where all of the letters are um, where all of the glitter is and it does create that kind of worn hand painted um, you know uh, feel to it because here's the thing if you're whitewash um, if your board is old and peeling and whitewashed your print is not going to be perfectly brand new okay now, um, the other thing is, as far as embellishments are concerned, the plastic bags that I'm using from the Dollar Tree, I liked those because they also had that aged, vintage, faded out feel. Um, but that's, again, another option. 
you guys, there's lots of things. There's gift bags. There's printables. There is um, things that you can trace and color in yourselves. You can write welcome. You can um, use gift boxes. There's so many options for you to um, put on your sleigh. Okay, there are lots of other tutorials for these sleighs out there too. So check out other people's channels on YouTube and see if you get inspired by how they decorated theirs. Okay, so now the only thing that I do wish was that this picture was a little bit bigger, but I do like this picture out of all of the red truck pictures for this sleigh. I like this one because it does look worn and faded and vintage, as I was saying. Now, I did get some gray paint on the um, uprisers, but I want to show you that I just wet my finger and they just wiped right off, okay? Um, yeah, I kind of do really wish that this was a little bit bigger of a print, but it is what it is. I do like the fact that it's clear, um, so you can see the wood grain coming through. It with also adds to that aged look, okay? Um, and I'm just cutting out the actual truck. I'm not um, cutting away the thing that says Merry Christmas. Now, if you want to use this plastic bag and you don't want to write Merry Christmas across the top you can cut out the Merry Christmas part as well and you can just glue it on there well as you can see I have cut the trees off um, the back of this um, pickup truck has uh, trees as well as gifts um, and I've just followed the line of the truck I cut the trees off and I'm gonna show you in a minute why we're gonna do that um, what I'm gonna do instead but um, Actually, we're just going to put a little piece of that Dollar Tree uh, garland tie on there. Um, but that's just an option as well. So you can cut the trees out and leave the trees on there if you want to. Um, but we're going to embellish it with a real piece of uh, pine. Real piece of fake pine? How's that? <laughs> now for this, I'm only using glue sticks. Um, the glue sticks that you would use for scrapbooking or for kindergarten crafts. That's what I'm using. They dry clear. Uh, the clear, the white ones will be clear onto the plastic. It holds this uh, plastic very well, um, and it gives much a smoother finish. I don't have to worry about melting the plastic or hot bumps or any of those things that can come with hot glue gun. Okay. And this isn't going outside, or else I would spray it with a coat of acrylic spray. Um, but this is going to hang inside my house, um, and then. Like I said, we're going to take a piece of the uh, Dollar Tree sort of garland um, and we're going to embellish it where the tree was, all right? So I just flip it over, rub glue all the way to the edges. I glue it on my mat so that I can take my glue stick and run it off of the piece to make sure I get all the edges nice and, nice and uh, uh, glued evenly. All right, and then rub out whatever air bubbles. I didn't find any, so... That worked out perfectly. And I got the tires and the windows and the whole spiel. All right. So now I'm just taking about a two inch piece of a garland tie and I'm gonna cut it in the shape of a tree. I'm basically gonna cut it um, sort of a triangle, make the top a little thinner and the bottom a little wider. And I'm gonna fluff it up like we did before so that this tree has some life to it. Now you can add additional embellishments to this tree if you want to, like the little berries or um, some flocking, but that is entirely up to you personal preference. Okay, and I'm just gonna glue it in the back of the pickup truck. So now here is stage two of, this can be done now, but I wanted to give it a bow. But here's the problem I found, and you guys might not find this. I, I didn't really know where to put the bow. Um, if we would have written Merry Christmas on the actual sleigh part and not repeated the Merry Christmas at the top on the running board, the top of their running board would be the perfect place to put a bow. But we did. We actually used that. So that's not an option for us. Um, but um, I have this great buffalo check ribbon that I got at the Dollar General. And I wanted to make a bow out of it. So I made a four loop bow and it just it's you'll see I'm going to show you I'm going to make it and I'm going to put it in the different spaces to show you guys but for me it was just a little bit too big and a, I, I don't know a little bit too frilly for this 
semi-masculine project. Like I feel like this, other than the writing in the Merry Christmas, it's sort of uh, like a masculine sort of sleigh, the colors and gender neutral maybe even. I don't even think that's the right word, but... Um, so then I was like, ooh, this bow is kind of poofy and it's kind of big for the thing. Where do I put it? Um, but it's just our regular old bow that we make all the time. You know, we just, uh, four loops, tied around the middle. Oh, no, this one we glued. This one I showed you, we took a piece and we glued it. Yeah, this is different. This is different. <laughs> this is this is bow making 702. <laughs> That's class 702. Um, what I did was I took the bow and I went back and forth and back and forth, one continuous string, and I just uh, took a, a second piece of ribbon, folded it in a fourth, and uh, glued it in the middle um, to make a tie. So here I am, I'm like, oh, do I want it here? Do I want to tie it on the jute? Do I want to make it hang from the bow? If I put the bow there, and I could fluff it out. I put the bow here, and oh, I decided to go ahead and put the bow here on top of the merry. Um, and I glued it, and after just, I don't know, as long as it takes for the glue to dry, I decided that I didn't like that at all. It was just too much going on at the top and not enough going on at the bottom, which is why I do wish this print was bigger. And I feel like hindsight being what it is, I go back and I get a bigger print, even if it was a print that I didn't like as much. But I don't like this, so I'm just going to pull the bow off. And I'm doing it gently because that is just brown paper on those rise on those uh, blades. But um, because the brown paper was shiny, it did release the bow pretty easily. And then the rest of the glue peeled off uh, fairly easily. So we'll just save that bow for another project. Um, and what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to make like a bow tie type of bow. Um, I just felt like that was a little bit more cleaner, a little bit more to scale of what the picture really could, uh, really represented. And uh, that's what we're going to end up doing. So after I try to see, no, do I want it here? Do I want it here? And this is where I called in Jim. And I'm like, Jim, what do you think? And he's like, oh, you know, I don't know, it's kind of big. And that's where I was like, yeah, hmm, I think you're right. Let's let's put it somewhere, and then we went ahead and tried all the different spots, and then we went ahead and made the other bow. So, um, I, look, I even tried to hang it from the string. I was like, oh, maybe if we hang it from the bow. I don't know. Why would I? Why do I need a bow on here, people? Let me ask you that. A, a nice berry sprig would have been really just appropriate. <laughs> I know. I'm so weird. I like to leave the design options in here for you guys. This is me planning the project. Some people are just like, why don't you just edit that out and do the tutorial? But first of all, that's not really teaching you anything. All you're doing is copying what I do. If I don't teach you the process and I don't teach you the planning and I don't show you different options, then you can't really personalize it and make it your own. And you won't really learn anything. You'll just learn how to do it like I did it instead of uh, learning for yourself to think about and design and all those things, okay? So now the smaller bow that we made is just one loop and I went ahead and I just glued the center um, on. Normally I would take um, the, the ribbon that will have the tails and we tie that around but since I wanted this to be like a bow tie with no tails, I just took a small section, folded it in quarters and uh, wrapped it around the middle so it looks finished and complete. All right, and then I'm gonna glue it underneath the Merry Christmas on top of the actual sled, all right? So that's it, everybody. I finally just said I'm done. <laughs> if you hopefully like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments down below. Hopefully you did learn something. Um, hopefully you decide to tackle one of these yourself. And if you uh, haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And as always, take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time. Bye.